<laughs> okay, so I am drinking gin tonight and you won't hear me pour it because this is the second take of um, this podcast. And we like never do that. No, we've never done that before, have we? What, where we've like got, we've just like got a few minutes in and just decided we're going to have to do that again? Yeah. Yeah, no, we don't. We tend to do it in one take just for a chat, don't we? The issue that we've got is Carlo's being naughty tonight. It's her bedtime <laughs> and she's seven months old. Uh, she's a dog, just to be clear. Um, and she's, she's a golden retriever. Yeah, and she's just barking and we don't know why. I don't know why she won't settle, but she's usually really good at night, so. Yeah. So she's in her bed in a in a different room to where we are. Um, and she just barks a bit. I don't really know. Sometimes she's a bit unsettled. Yeah, um, I think it's there's quite a lot of dogs that live around us yeah, and near yeah, us. And she, yeah. I always try to think that, you know, dogs can hear things that you can't hear. Mm. And they react to things that you yeah. don't even know are happening. When she barks like this, it's because the other bark, the other dogs are barking. Yeah, around, There's literally nothing you can do. No, I know. We are still in the process of training. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, <laughs> which is going brilliant. <laughs> um... We have decided to do this episode on the sex and gender debate. Yep. Um, yeah, we. so we were saying, weren't we, in, in the first take that you, probably... We were talking about the definition half, of it first, weren't we? Like, what is sex, what is gender? Yeah, yeah. And you, like, you asked... Um, that sex doesn't mean... Yeah, that's how you started, wasn't yeah. it? Um, so, so for some of you, you'll already know sort of about this debate. Um, some of you will know nothing about it. I think I was just going to say about way over half probably don't who listen to this do podcast. You think? Mm. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. Nah. Really? Mm. Hmm. Yeah, not not that many Radfems listen to this. Yeah. Um, it's a rape mix, isn't it? Yeah, it really, really is. Mm. Like that man in in Canada. I know I've who kinda, just DM'd you. Was he from Canada? Was yeah, it? that man that was DMing me saying that he listens to our episodes. If that's you, hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> it might have been the states. I'm really sorry if I got that mixed up. I'm sure he'll message me to tell us. Yeah, he'll know. But we might have like ten men be like, "Oh, was it's it me?" It's all me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so the sex and gender debate. Uh, when we say sex, we don't mean shagging. Yeah, we don't mean shagging. Um, Sorry, that's is that the correct term. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I was talking about the fact that so like Jamie was saying this, and then just before we cut off and decided to retake it because Carlo was being a, running around the living room. Yeah, was running round, um, chasing Castro. Yeah, was that. I actually think part of the reason, it, only a small part, but I do think part of the reason that we're in this mess and this debate around sex and gender is because people became really almost like uncomfortable with saying sex yeah. when they were talking about biological sex. Yeah. And people were like... You called it linguistic conservatism. Yeah, I think it is linguistic conservatism. I've just I, made yeah, that up. I, no, I think that's, I think that's but correct. I guess what I mean by that is that, do you remember on forms, it would be like sex, male or female, and then people were like, oh, gender sounds nicer. Yeah. So it would say gender, male, female. That doesn't even make sense. No. Y- your gender isn't male or female. No. It, but anyway, so we'll get into that. But I do think that what happened over a period of time is that we used to just say sex, male yeah. or female, or prefer not to say, or, or whatever. Now the two are interchangeable. Yeah, but they're not which actually means, interchangeable. Yeah, which means sex that, and gender aren't synonyms. Yeah, but in sort of real terms, in in the way that we use the language, they they are interchangeable, yeah, and they do use mean the them. same. Yeah, people use them like that, but to that's the point not what those words mean. Where those words individually could mean both sex and gender at the same time yeah i know because but that i think that is because of this massive misuse of them yeah so i think what happens with all language as you as you probably already know is that when a word gets used millions or billions of times over years by people to mean something mm. it that changes its meaning it, it's its meaning evolves mm. right even if it's Absolutely. incorrect yeah 
That's yeah. how we've got the word. I know this. Sorry, this is way off track, but that's how people think. Irregardless is a word. Yeah, it doesn't exist. <laughs> but people go irregardless. That is not a fucking regardless. word. Say, regardless, we don't need the ir. Yeah, where did you get the ir from? Irritating is what it is. <laughs> like I just, but like that is so interesting because you know in America in U.S. dictionaries they include irregardless under regardless. Hmm. just to sort of say like this is a way that people use that word it's not fucking it's not a real word it doesn't mean yeah. anything but they've, they've had to add it yeah because you know people fucking use it absolutely but anyway <laughs> so yeah i think you're right i think gender and sex has become almost synonymous when it isn't yeah and i think that's where some of it comes from is that like people like i still fill out forms to this day and it'll say gender Male or female, and I think for fuck's sake, I always yeah. cross it out and write sex. Do you? Yeah, I sometimes do like that. For fuck's sake, learn naughty. what words mean if you're going to ask me. Yeah, do you know what I mean? The correct, the correct option for gender would be, technically, would be man, woman. Yeah. Oh, no, well, depends how far far back. If you go further back in the theory, the correct answer would be gender, masculine or feminine. Yes, because yeah. ge- even gender in language is like German, French. Yeah. The, the the gendered masculine, elements, feminine, yeah, neutral. Well, yeah, exactly. It was masculine, feminine, neutral. Mm. Like that's what it that's what it meant. If you go f- back to yeah, the origin absolutely. of the words, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think like that's part of it. But we wanted to like I guess get into some of the bigger questions around it, and we've written some questions for each other. Yeah. Um. So the first one is right. Ha- so I wrote this one down. How would you describe the situation now? to someone who had absolutely no idea what was going on. Like, literally, as if, like, okay. I don't know, as if they're an alien or something. Okay. And, and they're like, what are you on about? What well, do you mean? I think I'm quite diplomatic. You're more diplomatic So, I'll than go me. first. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do Jamie's first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, at the moment, there is a huge debate. Some people wouldn't even call it a debate around sex and gender more specifically gender and it's often referred to as the gender debate um it's tending to happen in feminist circles lgbt circles and more tends to be the left-wing politics circles um and oh it's as you can tell probably by the way i'm speaking it's it's really um What's the word? Which uh, word do you want me to go for, Jamie? Uh, you've got to be really careful what you say. Yeah. Um, because you could describe something or talk about something and not realise that you've offended a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, as we've already said, the word gender often has become synonymous with sex now what this means in real terms is that legal language around biological sex i.e female and male um, is becoming more unclear when it's being changed for the word gender am i doing all right yeah i've not i've not offended anyone yet i'm sure you have (laughs) don't worry about that Um, i stopped giving a fuck about that ages ago and um now nowadays and more um more recently um people are um becoming more aware that um people don't identify with the gender role stereotypes associated with their sex and it's commonly referred to by some people as being trans so being transgender and that includes um like non-binary people as well um however the debate is that whilst you uh for one side is that whilst you can still identify as whatever gender you are and bear in mind gender comes from gender role stereotypes um so like masculine feminine neutral um your biological sex is still material reality and it essentially is a lot of different perspectives and arguments around that. Yeah. 
and that is the most diplomatic way I think that I can put it. Yeah, I agree with that. Darling, <laughs> Let's, I'll ask you the same question. So how would you describe it? How would you describe the current gender debate to someone who has no idea? Um, okay, so I would explain it as... I'm trying to think of the way that I do it when I'm lecturing or teaching. So I guess the way that I tend to explain it is that... Oh, this gin is strong. Is it? Yeah. You did put quite a bit in. Yeah, it's 43%. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. That's some mad shit. Sorry, continue. I know, I can't remember now. Anyway, right, so I guess the way that I would explain it is that there is currently an incredible amount of tension um, socially, politically, um, linguistically around um, what the concept of sex is uh, versus what the concept of gender is, which has become a battleground around rights. Um, and so um, the leading arguments are that sex is biological material reality and that, um, you know, that doesn't change. However, of course, people can identify and live however they want, express themselves, whatever, but that doesn't physically change anything about them necessarily like their dna and who they are and how they were born and whatever um versus the argument that sex in itself is a social construction and that um if gender and sex are a social construction then you can be whatever you want and whoever you want and that people should have to respect that and have to feed into that and accept your version of whatever it is that you say you are so i guess the tension arises from the fact that on the one hand uh, you have people that are sort of saying, um, well, there's, there's a spectrum of people. There's the people that genuinely ridicule and are genuinely transphobic. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that sort of like, we hate trans people, fuck you. You know, that horrible um, sort of, they're weird, they're this, they're that, you know, they're, they should be locked up or they're mentally ill, that that horrible shit, right? And then you've got, uh, which is interesting because no, but not a lot of people actually talk about those people. Which I find really interesting. Those that actually yeah. hate well, trans those, people. Those people tend to be the same ones who are openly homophobic, yeah, openly yeah. racist, yeah, I know. openly right wing. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. they are usually excluded from the debate from the outset because they don't intersect with the circles yeah. in which this debate is happening in online. But I find that really interesting in a way that in this debate almost like the people that actually do hate trans people and that would genuinely harm them would ge- would kill them would harm them would beat them up in the street would bully them would um you know do horrible horrible things to them they they are literally ignored as if then they don't even exist then you've got this other sort of approach which is um you know a women's rights approach that is usually s- sort of positioned around radical feminism which is um we you know, which which also has different approaches and perspectives within that as well, because the radical feminism isn't just like one big voice. Um, <laughs> but it's like this approach that, um, yeah, identify however you like, express yourself however you like, dress, look, live however you like, be comfortable, be safe, you have human rights, we, you know, all the rest of it. However, uh, y- your your biological sex is immutable, you don't, and also other people don't have to feed into that. Almost, I try to, the way I think about it is that it's similar to the way religion works. Religion, yeah. The protected characteristics around religion, like, yes, believe in a God. Yeah, you believe there's heaven and hell. Yep, you believe in redemption. Yep, you believe in reincarnation. I don't, but that's sound. Like, you get on with that, that's great. You live like that, that's sound. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to discriminate against you. I'm not going to bully you, but I don't fucking believe in any of it. Like, so that, the, mm. and um, that, we have somehow managed to all, well, in some, well, not in all countries, because that would be really sort of, that would be incorrect to say that. But in, in some countries, we have got to a place where people who have absolutely no religion or religious beliefs and genuine, or, and also are actively anti-religion, are able to say that without prosecution. Like, some countries have got to that. Some of them haven't. Yeah. But some have, right? Um, but in the sex and gender sort of debate we've got this position where lots and lots of people are saying uh live how you want however we don't accept that then on the other side of the perspective you've got people that again it's a it's a broad church like even with the pro-trans i would say that or like pro-gender pro-trans stuff Mm. you've got people who are like 
who are trans themselves who are like, yes, I'm trans. This is how I identify. However, I'm not going to push it on anyone else. You don't have to accept it. Mm. You know, that sort of very personal individualist sort of approach. And then like further the other way, you've got that really quite, which is where I think the tension's coming from, which is um, sex doesn't exist. Everything is a social construct. We should be able to identify how we want. That should be changed in law. It should be changed and reflected in material reality. Mm. That, you know, our birth certificates should be changed. You, you're not allowed to say, uh, like, if you say that we're trans, it, it's offensive because we're actually the other gender or the se- or even that our sex has changed. Like, it's right up the other end in terms yeah. of the argument. If you were to draw it on a spectrum, it's right sort of yeah. that, like, quite far up. And it's not, you know... Anyway, so I guess that's how I would explain it to people is that, like, we've got this massive public debate going on um, that isn't that isn't nice at all. And I think the majority of the harm has been towards, interestingly, as we were just saying, has not actually been towards truly transphobic people. It's been towards women who just won't move. They won't budge on their ground around women's rights, that women are a, a sex class, yeah. that biological sex exists that women are oppressed based on their biological sex and they always have been and it's yeah. glo- it's a global reality. Mm. Yeah. So therefore, there is tension around that because obviously the other perspective is anybody can identify as a woman and they should be respected as a woman and they are a woman. And they where... should get the same protections yeah. in law that women have, such as single sex spaces. Yeah, and it starts to get really complicated around how the rights intersect. But my understanding of intersecting rights is that it should never harm another group. So where rights intersect, right, a right shouldn't trump another right that would cause someone yeah. else harm. Yeah, absolutely. But that is what Which would is the happen. prison debate that was, that's yeah. been in the media recently where a woman who was in a woman's prison was raped by a trans woman who was an inmate um and once she got out of prison that was the legal challenge um yeah. and um and they the the high court ruled that trans women belong in women's, women's prisons, prisons which are supposed to be single sex spaces yeah so it's a real a real blow for you know sort of the those that you know believe that women's uh spaces should be for biological yeah. women you know yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is I think it is really quite um I think it really is it is te- it's well it's not just tense like the reason that I would when you hesitated earlier and you're like what's the word the word that was going through my head was dangerous because mm. I think it's a dangerous debate I think women are yeah being discriminated against I think they're being sacked they're being silenced they're being oppressed they're being harmed they're being threatened they're being attacked, mm. they're being stalked, purely for saying... I mean, some of the conversations that I've seen that women have been attacked for have been very, very mild-mannered, as in, like, women just saying, I don't know, along the lines of, um, I absolutely believe in your rights, I absolutely believe you should be protected, however, I do not believe you're a woman. Like, that, like yeah. a really quiet... That, that's, a, in my opinion, is a very mild sort of opinion yeah, on this so compared like, to what some people I, say. I absolutely think that um, you should be able to build a church. I absolutely think that you should be able to practice your religion. Um, but I don't think that God exists. Yeah. Like, is is the, and the also sort of you lines... should be free from somebody forcing you to believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just like yeah. anything else. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do you think, like... How important do you think this debate is to feminism as as an as a sort of a movement and as and towards women's rights? Like, how? What role is this playing? I think it's at the moment. I think it's playing too much of a role in feminism. If I'm going to be completely honest, so much of the dialogue in feminism at the moment is centered around the gender debate and the trans debate, and we're not focusing as much of our time, energy and resources on things like abortion or equal pay, um, which we were maybe 10 years ago. Um, But I do think it's important because at the end of the day, if we can't describe 
our own um, reality in why we are subject to oppression and discrimination, i.e. being female, in a patriarchy, we can't then therefore... You can't um, do anything. We can't... Um, Feminism doesn't we, exist. Well, we can't fight for mm. the things that I've just mentioned, equal pay, yeah, yeah. Um, abortion rights. But do you think that's why it's become such a sticking point? Because the, in reality, uh, what what's happening mm. there is that if you can't talk about biological sex and you can't talk about sex-based depression and you can't talk about being female and you can't talk about the female body and you can't mm. talk... Da, 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 what the fucking hell, what the fucking hell do you do in feminism? Yeah, no, I do agree with that, but I think there's a lot of people who are perhaps posing as feminists. Oh God, there's a lot of that shit when, going on. When on on both sides, when they are not remotely interested in women's rights and yeah. they are interested in the trans debate. Yeah, and, and, that... and they're and they're sort of using their like what I would see as actual transphobia, so like the hatred of, humiliation of, bullying of, discrimination of um, non-binary and trans people, where um, they're then sort of saying it's a it's feminism and it's women's rights, but these are individuals and groups that yeah. couldn't give a fuck about women's rights. Yeah, I they never have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw something. I mean, actually, you know what? We'll go on to it in a bit, but. Yeah, it is. I think it's really important. Like, we already know that women in prison are some of the most traumatised women in the country. They, almost all of them, have been subjected to really violent sexual abuse throughout their life. And it's really important that these women are protected Yeah. in the space yeah. that we are putting them into as a state. And when... You know, and yeah. what rights does a woman in prison have to say, I don't want to be housed with somebody with a penis? Yep. Uh, and, and you know, there's so many diff- there's so many issues. There's countries, I can't think off the top of my head, but some of, my list- some of the listeners might, might know, where the female inmates have all been forced to take contraception because they're housing trans women in the prisons. And I'm not saying... So someone gave me a bit of stick about this the other week, saying, oh, trans people don't want to just want to shag everyone who they see. Well, no, but if you put people together, they will shag. Why do you think there's so many women shagging women in prisons? Not only that, but... People will have sex if you put them together for long enough. Yeah, but not... Well, not only that. Well, we know that, don't we? That's why, like, I mean, it's rape and sexual abuse, but, like, look how many male officers fucking rape and abuse female prisoners. Yeah. Like that, but anyway, that's besides the point. I was going to say, like... Um, but they didn't want prison pregnancies because then that would be, a, you know, another child straight into the But don't system. you find that ironic, the fact that they've put all the fucking... Fe- the, all the female prisoners who they know are fucking female on female contraception so they don't have female fucking pregnancies. So they know who the yeah. females are, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Wild. I agree. So they've, I agree. Put, so they've put, like, say, for example, some men who ID as women into these prisons... And then suddenly they all need contraception. Why is that? Mm. Fucking riddle me that. Yeah, you know because I mean? biological sex is real. Yeah, because yeah, so we can all play pretend that nobody is that nobody. You know, oh, we're not going to acknowledge biological sex. We're not going to say um, woman anymore. We're not. You know, when we're talking about smears, and we're not going to talk about women anymore. When we're talking about pregnancy, but the fucking prison service know which ones to give contraception to. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's honestly I, I I have got I understand why this is such a sticking point for so many people because there is so much if we right okay so the, what I've been thinking about recently is the way some of this is going means that in 5 10 15 years imagine a society or a culture or a global community where you literally cannot differentiate at all between women like female mm. human beings yeah. and anyone else who just says that's what they are imagine mm. where like yeah. you've got no difference in rights no difference in exemptions no yeah. difference in anything like that th- and at I the think- end of the day it doesn't matter what we label anything in sort of a lot of social construction like uh, social constructivist views what we label things is just socially constructed. No matter how we label it, the same half 
of the population is still going to oppress and abuse the other half of the population. Yeah, no matter what you've called them. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a really good point. So, like, when I was younger, I've said this to Jamie loads of times, but when I was younger, I definitely would have described myself as a social constructionist and sort of my work was more social constructionist leaning um, and I loved social constructionism and really like lean towards that. And um, when I was doing my PhD, I had spoken several times about social constructionism and um, a scholar, a philosophy um, who was a professor, um, retired just around that time um he is one of my friends and he contacted me and was a bit like and this wasn't anything to do with the gender and other stuff it was about my work around sexual violence and he contacted me and was like i've read your posts a few times about social constructionism and i wondered whether you had actually considered the implications of social constructionism and i was a bit like what's that supposed to mean everything's socially constructed he was like is it though Mm. and it was the first time anyone had ever challenged me on it and i was like go on then and i spent a few hours on a like a, I think we were on Skype or something like that at the time and he pushed me and he was like is gravity socially constructed mm. and I was kind of like uh, well yeah humans constructed it, it's like wicked so if I socially construct gravity to be meaningless or that it doesn't apply to me or that it's just a human idea that doesn't really exist and I just jump off a building what do you think will happen to me mm. and I was like what do you mean he was like well will gravity pull me to the ground or not and i was like yes and he was like right so it can't really be socially constructed then can it because you could socially construct it to be whatever the fuck you want but it'll still kill you won't it yeah and, and that's went, what we we go back to linguistics though so much yeah. of that is the social like socially constructed argument is that it is socially constructed but it only goes as deep as the words yeah so which he, is i'll come on to something about that in a minute but continue like, okay yeah hold it then because yeah. i think that'll be important but like so he pushed me right in this in this like conversation he was like so for example he was like um what if i was to say that paedophilia is just socially mm-hmm. constructed jess and i was like well what do you mean and he was like well what if i was to just say that um you know sex with children uh, we just say we, it's harmful because we say it's harmful and we construct it to be harmful but it's not really harmful we just say it's harmful and i was like what the fuck and then he started being like and what about rape what about domestic violence what if we said that was socially constructed and that you know women aren't really harmed from rape they just they just feel they're harmed because you say that rape is bad but if you constructed rape as positive mm-hmm. rape would be positive and i was like what the fuck yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and he really really pushed me and i went away from that and i was like Oh my God. And then it, essentially what he told me to do is he said, listen, go away and read about critical realism. He was like, because you need to learn. And you need to understand it. I fucking, I did, right? Went away and did loads of reading around critical realism. And essentially the argument around critical realism is, so, is, is very simple. Some things are socially constructed and some things aren't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some things couldn't give a fuck how you socially construct them. They will not change ever. Yeah. And, you know, that is very important. Like it's it's extremely important to the work that I do. Um, critical realism really helped me to do all of my work in my PhD and after. And I think it's a nice position to be. It's like we accept that some things are socially constructed, but we also accept that some things are not. Yeah, yeah. And that that is a that's a real yeah. thing. It has t- it's tangible. It's real. Yeah. Like so, what I was about to say is quite similar to that. Um, around but mine is more politics based so a lot of people in the trans debate particularly more on the trans rights side talk about Karl Marx as if he was a social constructionist right and a lot of his work like you could say it is um it is of that sort of theory But they're applying it to something much wider, which you can't apply it to. Mm. So social constructionist theory wasn't very well developed at all during the time. I was going to say, I didn't think it was. Not from what I'd read, anyway. It it wasn't. Um, And Marx talked about, you know, that it was socially constructed. I mean, he didn't use those, those terms, that you'd got different class systems and they they are genuinely socially constructed through the way that we live in society absolutely and yeah. people are misquoting marx and misusing marx marx's work 
in arguments um, to say that sex is socially constructed, and it's not. No, it isn't. Gender and the patriarchy is, yep. but that doesn't mean that a, that a biological male is any is is the same as a biological female. Yeah, no. Um, and something that I think is, I think it's, I've got, a, maybe I've got a bit of a bee in a bee in my bonnet about it, is that there's a lot of people saying that they're like communists, and they have no idea what the communist party feel about the trans debate they the communist party aren't social constructionists no at all they because they they believe that in order to be able to um fight for your rights you've got to be able to use language to describe them Mm. and that has been going on for like centuries yeah um so sort of the, the politics around it is something that really annoys me. And then obviously you've got people misquoting 1984, oh, which does my head in as that. well, when they clearly haven't read Orwell or any of his essays. Because <laughs> a lot of these people um, aren't really left-wing at all. They might be economically left, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah. They, they're individualistic and they're conservative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. Um, and it's hard and... to pick some of it apart as well. It doesn't surprise me. Because you, I, I, I know this might not make me very popular, but there's a lot of um, criticism of um, people who... Like, of people who claim to be gender critical or whatever. The criticism te- from, um, like, trans activists and trans rights people say like oh they're all in bed with the the right they're in bed with the conservatives they're, and they're the saying it and the religious, religious right. right yeah right well first of all one i've fucking seen that with my own eyes so yeah. i know that's happening in some group that is definitely happening yeah, right 100%. so they're not lying people on that side are not lying about that they have seen that that is true however that's not everybody because yeah. as i was saying earlier it is a broad church so within the people who are criticizing and being and critically analyzing it there are a lot of different perspectives so yes there are some people that have very much gone towards that conservative religious right approach there are some of us like me i couldn't be fucking further from that shit Mm. you couldn't pay me a million fucking quid to support that shit yeah not a fucking chance yeah what's that thing you say the enemy of your enemy isn't your friend. Yeah, no, and I believe that. Tr- I truly believe that. Yeah. Do you, you never ever get in bed with your enemy's enemy? Never. Mm. It's not. It's not. It's it. No. <laughs> it's like no. Like, but yeah, like there is a lot of that going on where you know there's people essentially um, accusing some of the voices influencers writers of being conservative but that's because some of them fucking are yeah they they are there's no yeah. point arguing that they're not there are some people like that yeah i read some horrible posts maybe maybe like a year ago um where somebody was accusing um a lesbian woman um who i think thinks she's a trans rights activist um accusing her of having a trans wife and her wife was just a butch lesbian yeah and and it just made me really sad because lesbians and butch lesbians get like misgendered all the time and it gets used in like a really horrible way like oh you look like a man mm. So to see somebody claiming to be critical of gender, yeah, and i.e. Then, and then you look it. like a yeah, man yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have short hair, you wear this, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, exactly. And then using it against as an insult, as an insult I know. is not gender critical. I know. And it, it really right. upset me. This, this woman was like, I can't believe they've said this about my beautiful wife. And she was so upset. And I just thought, and these were the people who are, who are right wing. Yeah, so yeah, they are, we yeah. know that that is happening. Yeah, is. And that makes it really hard for a lot of us who are radical feminists, as in radical from the root, from the grassroots yep. feminist, who don't believe in that. And a lot of us are lesbians. Like, so many of us are lesbians who would never even dream about saying anything like that. 
Yeah, or like fucking dictating to more butch women, mask women, like, oh, this is what you look like and therefore you want to be a man or you are yeah. a man or like horrific shit like that. That like That's like basically like trad wife shit. Yeah, for sure. But that again, it's because it comes from that conservative, you know, view of what a woman is and what a woman is supposed to look like, and yeah. therefore, if you don't look like that, you're a man. Yeah. Which is which, which again is an issue around gender roles. Yeah, like, absolutely. I've I've lectured on this, and that's what gender roles comes down to. Yeah, it does. It comes down to stereotypes. Yes, it does. It's a set Say, of stereotypes. So, like one of the arguments is, well, all right, describe what a woman is. If you're not, if you're saying that you don't have to be biologically a woman to be a woman. Describe what a woman is without using stereotypes. Yeah, and it's impossible. Misogynistic stereotypes. Yeah, because uh, obviously the answer is that you're a, f- you're a female essentially. Yeah. But of any other answer would require a stereotype, mm. because the only thing really that all women have in common is that they're female. Yeah. And that and goes for intersex yeah. women as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because I can't, I can't be women. fucking. I literally don't think I've even got the energy to go into the bullshit around how intersex people keep being used as pawns uh, in yeah. this do debate. You know, do you know what pisses me off as well? I know quite a few intersex people, and I, I think I don't know if they would call. Is intersex the right word? Some people use it. Some intersex people say that they are intersex, or some people say they've got a DSD. Yeah, and I you know, would yeah. not in a million years think, oh. Yeah, that means that they're not they're not actually a oh, woman or God they're not I'm actually not. a man. Or worse, oh, uh, they identify as a third sex. No, they fucking don't. Yeah, the if you know anyone intersex, no, they fucking don't. Yeah. What a load of shit. Inter- vast, vast, vast majority of the time, you don't even know. No, I know. No, I know. And it's it's a very specific medical issue that they that they suffer with but it doesn't mean that they're any less of a man or any less of a woman no i know but also i think what people when they're busy throwing them around as pawns people don't don't care that much actually that these are genetic um conditions and disorders which actually cause other health issues yeah they cause like heart conditions yeah they cause liver issues, liver, all yeah, sorts. Yeah, exactly. Digestion. So, so there are things where these people, babies. yeah, these people actually, you know, in some cases have had to have significant surgeries mm. to, to you know, to be held. They're on medication for yeah. other issues. Like these are, it's not, yeah, no, I can't even. But I it's, don't it's sex. The energy. Each condition has a sex. Oh yeah, it does because certain um, DSDs can only occur. All DSDs are either yeah they can only occur male or female right exactly yeah I was reading about it a couple of years ago because Mm. I felt like I didn't know enough about it and I saw this post from this intersex person who was just absolutely disgusted with the way that they kept being used in arguments I read this whole thread that she'd written and I was like fuck me I was not aware of this and then I went off and did loads of readings so I could understand it um. But I was so glad that I found that thread. I wish I could remember who it... I, I used to know her handle. I think I still follow her. But, like, I read it and I was like, oh, my God, she, like, really opened my eyes. I had no idea, like, how, yeah. like, that was coming across. Yeah. Um, why do you, like, why do you think this is all happening? Like, what's your opinion on this? Like, as a, like, from a philosophical point of view, why is this all happening now? Why are we in 2021 and arguing what a woman is? Um, because everyone wants to be looked upon kindly in history and we're seeing it the same as the as the gay debate and it's not the same do you think Mm, i think so i think it is the most sophisticated trojan horse movement Mm. i've ever seen in my life yeah i think it's a mixture i think the Okay, okay, hang on a minute, let me back up. I would not feel the way I, I feel about it like that and describe it as a Trojan horse um, if it wasn't for the fact that there is a concerted effort to um, stop women being called women whilst nobody gives a fuck about the word man. man. Yeah. So, like, you've got, oh, we don't say um, women anymore, we say people with a cervix, cervix or we, yeah. we don't say uh, that anymore, we say pregnant people. Oh, interesting. Uh, when are you getting rid of father and man? I think one of the things... Because that, annoys... that shit's not happening and that's how you yeah. know that it's misogynistic. One of the things that annoys me about that is people who claim to be like intersectional feminists and who support that. Well, where is their intersection for women who who English isn't their first language? 
and they can't understand or, or might not easily understand posts or posters or leaflets saying women with a, like people with a cervix. Oh no. I where can't... where did they fall when they when they're at risk of cervical cancer and are already less likely to attend screenings? Yeah, for sure. Where where is your support for that? I can honestly say as well, honestly, genuinely, that before I got ill and had to have my cervix removed, um, when I was twenty five, I couldn't have even told you what a cervix was. Yeah. I didn't even know where it was. If someone would have said to me, Where do you think a cervix is at like sort of like early in my early twenties, I would have been like, Fuck knows, mate. Mm. Not a fucking clue. Yeah. Like so like what's like I don't understand how we've gone so backwards to the point where we've got an entire generation of women who don't even know their own anatomy. They don't know what a vulva is. Yeah, everyone calling it a vagina. Yeah, oh my God. Honest People saying God. shave your vagina. Shave no, your vagina. you do not shave <laughs> your vagina. <laughs> yeah, as a public health message, please don't shave your vagina. It'll hurt. You'll probably cut yourself to ribbons. Yes. You'll end up in a hospital somewhere. <laughs> like, you know, you know. We, so that's what I'm saying is how did we get to a place where women don't even know what their own body is and now we're going... You're a, yeah, this is a great time to say you're like a, to call a person, people cervix habits. person with a vulva. Yeah, but I didn't know what a vulva was at all. I would have honestly, I, I would have thought that was a typo hard, yeah. for Volvo. Oh, <laughs> for sure, I would not have known what a vulva is. I would have had to have looked that up. Yeah, Vulvasaurus like, Rex. <laughs> I just, I don't know what we. I just, yeah, no, I. I don't know what this is about, but yeah, my my worry around the um, sort of the malice around it, my worry is that um, no matter what else is going on in this debate, right, it should be a massive red flag that they're coming only for the female language. But of course they are, because women are expected to be kind. Yeah, no, I know, but I guess what I'm saying is that all of the issues are around women's like women single sex spaces. Nobody cares about, for example, male mental health wards. Nobody's saying shit about that. Nobody, nobody's going. Um, they should be trans inclusive. You should allow trans men in the male mental health wards. Nobody gives a fuck. When people put up a post about male suicide statistics, there ain't no fucker underneath going Talking like trans men. Well, no, just saying. Well, this isn't very inclusive, is it? Yeah. What about non-binary people? Nobody fucking asks. When men pull up something about being a man, everyone yeah. talks about that. Everyone's sound about it. You pull something up about being a woman, fucking all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Like that, and that's how you know that there's so much misogyny in it. Mm. Because I tell you something now, I wouldn't be as bothered if they were coming for the men as well, but they're not. Yeah. There's no no one coming for Father's Day and men's language and all that shit. Mm. That's yeah. that for me was when I was like. Like that, I definitely knew that, you know, it was like this deliberate sort of. Um, it's like the obscuring of of what women are and how women can talk about themselves and how we can label ourselves. That's the other. Um, I think the hypocrisy in this. How can you possibly have a movement that suggests that it is empowering and it is your right to identify how you want? Except if you're a woman, you're not allowed to say that because that's not inclusive enough. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, woman. Yes, yeah, called woman with an X. Oh, that's some bullshit. As well. Yeah, I think the thing that annoyed me the most was when Caitlyn Jenner, without even a year of being transitioned, won. Um, what award was it? Was it GQ or one L? Of, I think it was, was Woman of yeah, the Year or Woman of the woman. Year. Um, and that obviously meant that Malala lost out on it. Yeah, I know. a woman who literally took a bullet for women's education, and then has launched the Malala Fund, which is giving out like twenty million a year to women's yeah. um, women's community funds all over the world. Yeah, that yeah, you're Although absolutely right. I, I like right. Caitlin's position on sort of you know trans women in sport. Well, yeah. Anyway, I think that is all we've got time for. We could talk about this for hours. We do. <laughs> and, and we do, yeah. Um, and I hope you found it informative. Please let us know if you've got any questions. We can always do a QA and a for this um, podcast if we get enough. Uh, just So just, yeah, just send them over to us. 
Yeah, and just just to be clear, if any if, if anyone feel anyone feels like messaging is calling us a turf, I don't care. But <laughs> we really don't care. Yeah, no, just like, don't. Like, do I it. Don't, yeah, no, I'm genuinely... Uh, I won't cry. Way, way past caring at this point. Women's rights come first. Absolutely. You fucking cheers to that and all. 